Almost the entire web today uses HTTPS, which means it is secured and authenticated by what we call certificate, which I talked about many times in this channel. Certificates are generated by what we call certificate authorities, which themselves are also have certificate that are trusted by something upper layers that are called the root certificates. This chain of trust is very critical for authentication. And today's topic is Let's Encrypt. Very, very popular certificate authority. Let's Encrypt uses multiple root certificates for their authentication and certification. And on September 2021, one of those root certificates will be expired. In this video, I want to talk about what is the ramification of that expiration that will happen in a few months. And uh, I'm going to go through the article that uh, Less Encrypt posted and what you can do. How about we jump into it, guys? Guys, welcome to the Backend Engineering Show. This is the show where we discuss all sorts of backend software engineering topics, news, and articles. So if you like this stuff, make sure to subscribe and like this video. And how about we jump into this? Uh, Let's Encrypt, a very, very popular certificate authority, have just announced that one of their root certificates right, are going to expire. And if your device is trusting only that root certificate that is about to expire, then you're going to receive uh, warnings on your client app or any app that consumes an API that you happen to use uh, HTTPS on the back end, which is using a certificate signed by Let's Encrypt. If you're only relying on that root certificate that about to expire, you might want to watch this and, and, and understand what really happens. Obviously, Let's Encrypt have sorts of, some sort of a concept that's called cross-signing. That means a certificate or Let's Encrypt themselves are signed by, I cross signed by multiple root certificates. I mean, even if this is expired or you do not trust that particular root certificate, there is also another root certificate that you can fall over and trust. However, not all clients are smart enough to understand this chain, uh, to understand this, this graph of, of trust this chain of trust uh, in fact one major bug in uh, on open ssl is there was a bug i believe in android devices that it didn't know that oh there is another path that i can take to trust this certificate to validate the certificate it will just go up and there up until one it finds one route and if it's expired or validated or, or revoked it will just reject the certificate despite there is another path that is cross-signed by another root certificate. Very tricky stuff, right? So how about we jump into the article, read it a little bit, and then discuss a little bit more. All right, guys, let's go through this article. Let's encrypt. DST root CA X3 expiration, September 2021. That's the title of this blog or this article. On September 30th, 2021, there will be a small change in how older browsers and devices trust Let's Encrypt certificate. If you run a typical website, you won't notice any difference, which is which is that's because most clients understand that there are two routes to trust, right? One of them are expiring and I don't believe they are planning to renew it probably. The vast majority of your visitors will still accept your Let's Encrypt certificate if you have if you have if you provide an api or have a support for iot devices which we know that the iot devices are more nefarious for uh, kind of having older versions or trust less certificates right root certificates you might have to pay a little bit more attention to this change let's encrypt has a root certificate called isrg root x1 this certificate guys i S R G root one is the one that they actually added on top of the other one that is about to expire. That one is the new one. And unfortunately, not all devices trust this. Modern browsers and devices trust the Less Encrypt certificate installed on your website because they include the I 
SRG root X1 in their list of root certificate. To make sure the certificates we issue are trusted on older devices, we also have a cross signature from an older root certificate DST root X. A X3, which is this is the one that is about to expire. <laughs> so, so th that certificate, or if you if you get a certificate from uh, Let's Encrypt, you will obviously the certificate authority will be Let's Encrypt, and Let's Encrypt themselves are cross signed with, with two root certificates. DST root CA X3 will expire on September 30th, 2021. That means those older devices that don't trust. ICRG X1 will start getting certificate warnings when visiting sites that use Let's Encrypt certificate. What should you do? For most people, nothing at all. We've set up our certificate assurance so your website will do the right thing in most cases. Is it really your website or is it your client? Hmm. I don't know about a website, right? I don't need to need to change anything in the website. It's it's the certificate, is the certificate it didn't change, right? I don't really have to reissue a certificate. That's good. If you provide an API or have an IoT devices, obviously if you if you are using a browser, you don't have to worry about it. browsers are the the best clients to these kind of things. They are always up to date. You don't have to worry about them. But if you have your own client, if you have your own C sharp app or a Python app or a certain app that does the verification of the certification, you might just want to see what kind of software they're using, what kind of uh, library they're using for this verification. You most probably did not write the verification yourself. It's just too complicated and nobody almost does that. We use a library such as OpenSSL, LibreSSL, WolfSSL, something like that, right? I don't know if WolfSSL is actually a library. I know it's a, it's a company. All kinds of your API must trust ICRG root X1, not, gen, not just DST root CA X3. Two, if client of your API are using OpenSSL, that's what I talked about in the beginning, they must use version 110 or later. There was a bug. I remember Ryan Sleevey talked about it on Twitter. In OpenSSL 10x, a quirk in certificate verification means that even clients that trust ICRG root X1 will fail when presented with an Android compatible certificate chain we recommended it by. All right, how about we discuss this a little bit? So, what do you need to do? You need to make sure that your devices that connect to a site that is obviously hosted on HTTPS and signed by a certificate uh, that is signed by Let's Encrypt, then you have to worry about this. Only if you're in this configuration, which most of the web is, because Let's Encrypt is free and you just get it right you can easily get it and i think it's gonna it's gonna cost a little bit of a havoc this this thing in my opinion now you have to check that your device that you, that is connecting if you're a browser if you if you only connect through the browser discard everything in this video because the browser is always up to date smart enough knows all that i'm talking about when you have an app that you built that uses some sort of a certificate verification. And most people don't know that they are using certificate because it's all hidden from you, right? You just say, okay, I'm connecting to HTTPS. Even a fetch command, a Node.js app that connect to an HTTPS site, you're going to do a certificate verification because you're going to do a TLS, you're going to receive a certificate from the server, and then you're going to do a, a validation when you do that validation, you're going to need some sort of a library that helps you do the validation unless you wrote the validation yourself, which is, I hardly doubt that, okay? And in the process of that validation, which is extremely complex, right? Look at this graph, for example. This is a graph from the RFC of the certificate chain. Like how many graphs you can get? There are so many possible graphs of certification chains that's the properly the accurate word so you can you can have multiple routes and multiple routes so you, there are many paths that you have to take you cannot just go one path and just terminate no you have to go back and then do almost like a what is this bread firth birth and you can go, obviously this is, this is the graph you have all these algorithms birth first uh, depth first all that jazz right so you end up with 
multiple routes. So you have you have to trust at least one, maybe. If you want more security, you might trust all of them. Up to you, really. That's all details that you can go through. It depends on the algorithm. And if you use OpenSSL, OpenSSL had a bug at one point, especially older version like 009, where it will go, it will take your certificate that it just received from the server and will check, okay, who's who signed this? Oh, let's encrypt. Okay, who can I trust? Let's encrypt because you, just, you can't just blindly trust, let's encrypt. It's not installed on your device. So you do the same thing. You do a cyclic check. Okay, who signed? Let's encrypt, right? It could be another certificate authority, but in case of cert let's encrypt, it's directly the root certificate, which is we know root certificates are not signed by anyone above it. It is signed by itself. It's also called self-signed. And we, if it's a self-signed, by default, you don't trust it, but unless it's installed on your machine itself, which most all OSs ships with these root certificate as trusted, right? That's why if you do, if you bought a device from China, be very careful what certificate has been installed in it, what root certificate has been installed in it, because they will clearly install some shady government root certificate, and, and using that, they can intercept the traffic, terminate your TLS, serve you a certificate that is signed by them, right? And your browser won't complain. I take that back. Browsers recently, your your other apps might not contain because they will check the operating system certificate store for this route and we say, eh, this this Google, this the, yeah, this is a Google.com um, certificate uh, signed from China, Great Firewall of China. Awesome, I trust it. Browsers though are moving away from this trusting completely trusting the operating system into trusting what do they call their own store they have their own certificate store so there's another layer of security here right and uh, even if you bought a chinese laptop that has like a shady root certificate if you're using chrome you should you should be fine because chrome will default to the chrome uh root certificate and i have no idea if if they can essentially force an installation in the certificate uh, store of the browser itself. I, I have no idea. But that said, we got OpenSSL had this bug where it will go up and it will just stop on the first certificate that is bad. And it's just like, hey, this certificate is invalid, despite there is another path that you that it can take and validate, right? So that's basically what I want to talk about. This is going to cause, uh, I think, cause a havoc a little bit, right? Especially with IoT devices, things like people will just force, they will be forced to update their devices left and right. They're using old iPhones. If you have an iPhone 4, all of a sudden, some websites won't work. You'll get this red uh, red button, right? The errors, the certificate error. What do you guys think? Do you have, a, are you running... Uh, a fleet of IoT devices, or are you have? Do you have some sort of uh, old devices or old apps that connects to an uh, a site that happened to be hosted by Let's Encrypt? Let me know in the comment section below. I'm gonna see you on the next one, you guys. Stay awesome. Goodbye.